Here now with Marshall wide receiver Tyree Brady. And Tyree, for fans who have yet to watch you play, give us a quick scouting report of what you'll bring to the NFL. Uh, just a strong hand at catch and receiver, you know, go up and make the 50-50 ball more than usual and um, smooth route runner, get in, in and out my breaks fast. So. How much of winning in those 50-50 balls is physical and how much of it is mental? I mean, you just got to have that mind. You got to have that mind state like, you know, I'm going to get this football. It's my football, nobody's football. So going up and getting it, you got to get it. And then you, when it hits your hands, you got to make a play. As a receiver, if it touches your hands, you always taught you got to catch that ball. So you really got to take pride in that. There's a few guys in the NFL that kind of have that my ball mentality, that ability to go up and win at the catch point. Is there one guy that you kind of look at and say, like, you know, this guy is the best of the best? Uh, yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, Julio Jones is the best receiver. Sure. Mm -hmm, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, is that, are there any other guys? One guy watching you, yeah. you know, we see Alshon Jeffrey every day. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. And Alshon, to me, like the way that you play, the way that you move, it's very, very similar to Alshon. Is he oh, a player yeah. that you've kind of watched? Oh, yeah. I definitely will watch Alshon ever since he was at um, South Carolina. You know, he's a sure. strong-handed receiver, and I like that about his game. He can go up and make them 50-50 balls, you know. And I always model that, model that part of my game, too. You know, I love being making those 50 tough catches like you do too. So. Is there one area of your game where talking with scouts that you know that you kind of have to improve and kind of prove yourself over the next couple of months? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, just um, just being out there, identifying, you know, a lot of teams, they've been bracketing me, throwing a lot of funky coverages my way. So, you know, just getting those teams down pack, seeing them from the jump. Mm. So it could get me open so I could know where the hole's at in the defense. So still be able to make plays. What's the uh, the secret to getting off press cover? I wanted to give away too many uh -huh. of your secrets, but what, what's the, 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 the key for a young receiver out there to get off press coverage? Uh, you got to take it as disrespect if a DB come <laughs> come up to you and press you, man. Like, you got to win. Yep. One-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's always an interesting thing to just see. Like, there are some guys that win with their, their strength and their technique. Yes, some guys are able to win with their feet. And, uh, what's the, the easiest way for you? Do you kind of look at it like, you know, I'm just going to kind of run through this contact, or do you try and win with technique? What's your go-to? I mean, I switch it up. It depends on yeah. the DB, how the DB plays. You know, what, when I watch film, I figure out then I like to switch it up on them. Don't keep it one way for them. So sure. different ways. All right. And who's the best corner that you face this year? Uh, best corner, I see. Uh, I mean, I got a lot of bracket in yep. too because I mean, sure. it's pretty, right. pretty That's hard. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please be joined by North Carolina State playmaker Jacoby Myers. Mm -hmm. now, you, you like that description? Is hey, that, is that, that fitting? No, that, that, that was perfect right there. For fans who are learning about your game, how would you describe it? Like you said, I want to. My number one goal is to go out there and make plays. I believe that playmakers got to make plays, and everything I did, I wanted to be the guy that, when it was third and long or third and short, game on the line, that they were looking for me. That I was in your head, you're going to try to take me away, and the coach was going to try to get me the ball. So, what's the proudest moment then? If that's your mind to go into each and every game, what's your proudest moment from your time at NC State? Proudest moment, proudest moment. We had some, some great victories as a team, I feel like. Just being through all those wins in the locker room afterwards, I mean, you can't you can't beat a college team. I mean, going through conditioning with them, just every time I won a game with them, it was one of my proudest moments. So what would you say is the toughest corner you went against? I and mean, you can't say, you know, teammates, someone on your own squad. Mm. Who would you say is the one player who gave you the most trouble here? Not saying shut you down completely, Jacoby, but right. gave you the most trouble. Uh, the toughest, well, I went against some great, some great safeties and nickels. Okay. So top two that come to mind first was Cameron Glennon and um, Derwin James. Derwin James. Yeah. So. Any particular reason why? They all over the place. You yeah. know, it's, it's hard to game plan for them because they do so much. Like Derwin played in the box. He could line up outside. He could return kicks. And Cam Glenn, he he had sacks against us. He had picks against us. He's he's done a lot. So they made a lot of plays against us, and they were fun to go against. Jacoby, when did you think the NFL was a possibility for you? You know, I always had a dream, but it became really – I saw it in my future probably last year. Okay. When I realized that I was able to – that was my first full year as a receiver, and I remember all the work I put in, all the benefits that were given to me. I feel like I had a chance. And how tough was that transition? Was that adversity that kind of helped you make you the player you are today? Oh, definitely. Going definitely. through that? I mean, that first year, they, a lot of people don't see the struggles, you know, of the summer, all the times you've been beat. They just yeah. see the victories on a Saturday night, so – I mean, I went through a lot of losses. I struggled a little bit, but I, I ended up, I had a great coach, a great support system, great teammates, and they just helped me push through every day. Would you give a shout out to one person or someone in particular who helped you get to this point here? Oh yeah, my mom. She's, yeah. she's been my rock ever since day one. I mean, she, she's done everything for me. She's been my coach. She's been- She's been your coach? Yeah. 
Yeah, you. I probably had more fear of her than some of my coaches back in the day. So, you know, she she's done a lot for me. So she's Creole. She she keeps it real with you. So oh, yeah. after a game, it's not like oh, yeah. Jacoby great game. It's like you, exactly. Yeah, it's you know what you did wrong when you come over here. So you better be ready to take the criticism. So you're still young in terms of playing the receiver, the receiver position. How have you filled out your skill set to this point, and where would you like to get better at? Oh, there's so many areas I feel like I can still grow in, just versatility-wise, because I play predominantly in the slot, but I know I can play outside, so just getting comfortable being out there, beating press, going up and just making more plays, I feel like it's never, it's so many plays out there on the field to be made, they just need more playmakers to make them, so. Last question, what is the most underrated aspect of playing in the slot, would you say? Being able to create mismatches. Because you get linebackers, you try to quicker than them. You get little DBs, jump over them. Safeties, not really the best cover guys. I mean, it's just being able to create your own mismatch with every, with every opportunity. Here with former Notre Dame running back Dexter Williams, and really should, shouldn't say running back, say playmaker extraordinaire, because that's what you did during your time there at Notre Dame, especially in your final season there. What was the biggest lesson for you in terms of making that jump and being able to excel the way you did in your final year on campus? Um, I just really uh, just wanted to come back and give our office that spark that we needed and uh, get them get us to the playoffs because that was something I wanted to do this year it was my senior year. I wanted just all the guys to just live up to their potential and get out there each and every day so I knew uh, once I got back on that field I knew it was time to just take our game to another level and I knew the office needed me and I needed them as well so once we put it together it was just like we couldn't be stopped. You were suspended for the first four games, mm -hmm. but after that, you gained almost 1,000 yards, just came five yards shy for, yes, for this season. So what did that mean for you to watch things from the sidelines and then yeah, be able to make the impact the way you did when you are on the field? Um, I definitely feel like it meant a lot, but sometimes I still feel like I felt short in certain places. But at the same time, not looking back, I'm always looking forward. I was happy to uh, just uh, make that stepping stone for Notre Dame and give the younger guys something to live up to and something to achieve the, this upcoming year. And also, um, it's just uh, I left on a good note. Well, I would say an okay note, but we didn't mm -hmm. finish the way we needed to, but we still got the job done. What did it mean to be the first part of the first program that got Notre Dame into the playoffs? Um, it was definitely something special because Notre Dame hasn't done it, and we were the first to do it. So I, I kind of felt like I, um, I'm a part of the history just by uh, being the first team to go to the playoffs. But other than that, um, it's still a stepping stone for the other guys. I want the other guys to go and win a national championship now. So Josh Adams, I'm mm -hmm. sure you're good friends with him. Yeah, you know, he made his mark, friends. made his yeah. mark in Philly. G give us, uh, give us some stories about Josh. What he was like during his time with the Irish. Oh, uh, Josh was uh, that dude, and also uh, man, he would just compete each and every day. He was my roommate, so we okay. shared a lot of good times together. Uh, spent a lot of time together. Uh, hung out, get, hung out together. Uh, I got him come down to Florida a couple times and uh, just chill around the family. And um, also, he's just like a brother to me. Mm -hmm. Speaking of family, your mother, how instrumental was she during for you early in the season when you were going through your adversity? Yeah, so I moved my mom up there in August. She stayed with me for the whole season. And it was just like, it, it really made my home feel like a, uh, it really made my house feel like a home again, I should say. And just having her around, a lot of my teammates came around. So it was just always good times. And I know she was happy to see her son get back on the field and just do what I love. And I was just also just happy to just to share those memories with her. Dexter, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Who was the toughest defender you went against during this 2018 season? And you can't name anyone on your own squad because you okay. have a couple of players, obviously, here at the Senior Bowl mm -hmm. and in the draft process. But who did you go against in 2018 was the toughest competitor? Um, I wouldn't say to single anyone out, but Clemson's defensive line, they were very disciplined. I, I congratulate Dabo Sweeney for that, just preparing them guys throughout the whole season, just pre pre preparing them guys for us. Um, they were a great team, very disciplined. They came out hard each and every play. So the last thing I note here, and you may not be able to tell on camera, but you got the green hair in the background, so it already seems like you might be a fit in Philadelphia. Hey, uh, if, Philadelphia, if Philadelphia wants me, I'm definitely there. I'm not going to turn it down. Whoever gives me a shot, I'm open for the opportunity. I just need a chance so I can show everyone what I can do. Here now with Nebraska running back Devine Ozigbo. And Devine, for fans who have yet to watch you play, give us a quick scouting report of yourself. Uh, I would say I'm a bigger back that, you know, kind of brings uh, the skill sets that smaller back can provide. So I try to be pretty balanced and, you know, like a hybrid type. And, you know, just, you know, try to make plays when they're there. Yeah, that's what one, one of the things that stood out to me was your contact balance, you know, that ability to stay alive way off that first contact. Is that something that you've kind of always had throughout the course of your career, or did you kind of develop that as you got bigger and stronger? I definitely think it was something, you know, like I had, but, you know, I had to develop it. It was one thing, you know, as the competition rises, your skill has to get has to match. So, you know, just being able to take the shots and, you know, keep going, that's one thing I'll be focused at in Nebraska, and that's one thing, you know, I, uh, slowly got better at. Man, what's one area where in talking with scouts that you feel, you know, I know I want to have to prove this over the course of the next couple months? 
Uh, it's honestly just uh, just showing overall that, you know, this past year that I had, the way my kind of career went, it was kind of three years of, you know, F and then kind of blew up. So I'm just, you know, trying to show everybody that this past year that I had is who I am as a back and, you know, that I can bring that consistency to a team. What's one part of playing the running back position? Maybe fans don't necessarily think about, the media don't think about, but really, really important and something that you have to put a lot of time and effort into. Uh, just understanding the game within the game, which is like pass pro, yeah. and just knowing what the, the old line's doing, knowing what the quarterback's seeing, and like how you can help, and how you, because like the faster you can identify, the better you can be at it. You can like, the blocks will be a little easier, you know, just getting smarter with the whole process. So doing that's one thing I feel like uh, it's it's hard to see from uh, from the stands, but as a, as a back, you got to focus in on it. Now, did that change for you with, with the change in system, or was that something that uh, just going through this part of the process that you feel like, all right, I know I've got to step my game up here? It's honestly something like I've always been interested in. Like I actually like the pass I like the schematic, you know, the scheme of it, figuring it out who I got to get. But you know, just being quicker and being uh, better at the actual uh, block itself, I think that's kind of where uh, you know where the level has to rise, especially coming to the, this program where you know all the, these guys are future NFL players and just matching the speed and getting getting it done right. All right, so I got to ask you now: the zone game, yes, gap scheme. What do you what do you kind of prefer? You feel like you could run either, but what what do you kind of lean towards uh, more in terms of your future success? I think uh, if it, if I can run it at a gun, I, I like the zone. Okay. But you know, if uh, if it's a gap scheme where I got to hit something hard, just going straight at it works too. Yeah, it's, I figured you would probably be more the latter, just because of the way you play. Yeah. <laughs> you had a nice shot there with uh, with Joe Deneen from Kansas uh, oh, yeah. in the middle of the practice yeah, today. Yeah. yeah, it was it was a nice little pop. Is that something that that physical element that you feel like you know I've I've always kind of had that mentality? Oh yeah, so like I'm not I'm not afraid to hit. You know, I, you know they say, always say in Nebraska, you know, run behind your pads, and that's something you know all the backs you know try to implement their game. And I kind of feel like you. I, that's something that if you're if you're doing it often enough throughout a game, it starts to wear the team down. Especially if you know you can do it a little bit longer, then you know that's when the big runs start happening. These four and three yard games start turning into twenty, you know, thirty big big plays. So that's something I like I like to do a lot. And then my last question for you: the Big Ten, a lot of really talented defenders. Who was there one? Was there one guy throughout the course of this season that really stood out to you? Oh uh, yes, sir, Devin Bush. That man, aside from the back, aside from the backers on, on Nebraska, yeah. Devin Bush is you know an opponent that I played that had a lot of respect for. You know just because of the way he played, and how he went up, how he took uh, how he took advantage of things. Here now is Syracuse wide receiver Jamal Custis. And Jamal, for fans who have yet to watch you play, give us a quick scouting report on yourself and what you feel you'll bring best to the next level. Um, I, I bring speed, you know, height, toughness, you know, uh, ability to jump. You know, just a bigger receiver that I like to uh, impose my will on smaller defenders and just, you know, create matchup problems. And then has there been an area in talking with scouts that, you know, you kind of have to prove yourself over the next couple of months? Yeah, just route running. You know, me being a taller receiver, it's kind of harder getting out of breaks, things like that. So me dropping my shoulders, dropping my weight to, you know, get out of breaks a little quickly. And then who's a corner that has really stood out to you so far through practice? Uh, Moreland, um, I forgot his name, his first name, but Moreland. Yeah, Jimmy Moreland, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good player, you know, uh, gets out of his, you know, he, he breaks to the ball fast. So, you know, a guy like that, it's hard to, you know, um, get away from, create separation. So I, I try to keep working on getting lower and getting out of my breaks a little faster. And then a Philadelphia native, what has it been like really the, over the, the last couple of years, obviously the Super Bowl run last year, and then seeing the success the team had this year, watching from afar up in Syracuse, uh, what was that like for you? Man, just a proud fan, man. That's It gives the city something to root for. Um, you know, it was like a heartbreaker when they yeah. lost. And, you know, m my mom called me. It's like big to us. So, you know, it, that win last year, it, it, it did something to the city. And it was the spirit and the vibes, you know, it, it's back. So, you know, it was a good feeling. Here now with Princeton wide receiver Jesper Horst. And Jesper, for fans who have yet to watch you play, give us a quick scouting report of what you'll bring to the NFL. I'm hoping to bring a mentality that I will do whatever it takes. You know, that probably means starting out on special teams as I catch up a little bit, but when you get me at the wide receiver position, I love to block. I'm happy to do that at all times, and I catch passes, and, you know, I'm getting better at my releases and my route running every day. So that's where I'm at right now. It's your, obviously one of the, one of the more interesting stories to me in this NFL draft because of your baseball background. I've spent a lot of time playing. I was we're a big-time player in the Ivy League, playing in the outfield for the Tigers. And How does that baseball background help you playing in, in uh, the wide receiver position? I think it's not a traditional background that a lot of football players have, but to me I would always just say like if you can hit a 95-mile-per-hour fastball or a curveball that's dropping six inches, like you can catch a pass that's coming in a little bit slower with a bigger ball. So I think it's really developed my hand-eye coordination. And then when you're in the outfield, you know, you're tracking balls left and right, and so that helps me with balls in the air. So I think it's definitely given me you know, a leg up in terms of hand-eye coordination and tracking balls. So we're still early in this process, but based off the feedback you've gotten from scouts so far, what's one area where you know you definitely have to take your game to the next level? 
I need to work on my releases and route running, no question. I saw it today myself. I've been working on it, but, you know, I know what I need to do, and I'll be there by the time I need to be there. What's the hardest part, I guess, of trying to create that separation on your own? I'm a big guy. I'm 225, and so I'm a pretty big target for them to get their hands in there. So, you know, I need to work on my hand fighting, and I need to be a little bit quicker to get away from those DBs because sometimes they got their hands in me today and showed. So what's the, if you could look at the NFL, is there a player that you kind of model your game after? I, I have one guy in mind that you're probably going to hear a lot of moving forward, but is there a player that you're, you're starting to kind of see more of yourself in? That's a good question. Um, you know, the two guys I probably like watch the most film on are Justin Watson because he had a very right. similar background um, to me, and I also love watching Larry Fitzgerald. Not that I think I'm comparable to him, but the way he catches the ball is yeah. inspirational to me. Um, but I'm curious to see what you have to say. Well, I was going to say, you know, you're going to hear a lot of the Adam Thielen because yeah. of the Minnesota background. Yeah, I think he's a little bit shiftier and yep. smaller than I am, but sure. I love the Minnesota background. Yep. He's my favorite player in the league, so it, I'll take that comparison every day of the week. Here with running back Wes Hill, the pride of Slippery Rock at the Senior Bowl. And Wes, when did you think that the NFL would be a possibility for you? Um, I thought at a, at a, at a young age, man. I, I, feel, I felt like I had the abilities, had the traits to, to play against the best and at that level. Um, it really hit me, I want to say, my sophomore year in college. Okay. Um, I really felt like I could, could play with the best of them. Um, all I needed was an opportunity, and as you can see, as my career went, you know, went through, I got an opportunity and made the most about the NFLPA game. So you talk about the NFLPA game, you get to call up to the Senior Bowl. What was that like for you? That the hard work and that perseverance kind of showed through for you? It was crazy. You know, um, you dream about calls like that. You know, uh, I grew up watching the, the Senior Bowl, watching all you know athletes from all over the country, the best of the best, play against each other, and I like, you know, y'all want to do that one day. Like, you know, I hope I can get the opportunity. And, the call came and I was kind of starstruck. I was like, of course, like without hesitation. And then it really hit me. I'm like, yo, I'm about to play in the senior bowl. You know what I mean? So it was a, it's a great, you know, I've loved the experience so far and I'm looking forward to, you know, the rest of the week of practice and everything else. So you grew up in Wildwood, yes, you played at Slippery Rock. What would it mean for you to play for the Eagles? Um, To play for the Eagles is like like your hometown team. It's it's like- Or were you a fan growing up? Was I a fan growing up? Put you on the spot. <laughs> I was, I was. It, I was a fan growing up, I'm not going to lie. Um, as much as I try to be different than everyone else okay, around me, okay. everyone around me was Eagles fans. You, know? you got to be nervous for a second. I was waiting for, like, he's going to nah. tell me he's a Giants fan, a Cowboy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, boy, nah, we got to cut man, this, like, I right had, now. So. I, was a, I, was a, I was a huge Vic fan as a kid, man. And, and everyone around me loved the Eagles, and I always try to be different. But secretly, I was always rooting yeah. for them. So, but, yeah. So as fans are learning about you and they're going on YouTube and check out the highlights, how would you describe your playmaking style from the running back um, position? I would say from a running back position, I would say it's never a dull moment. You know, it's it's always exciting watching me run. You, um, you know, I always try to make plays whenever I can, just doing it my way, you know what I mean? I feel like my style is kind of untamed, kind of wild, but uh, always seeing to make it work. What's the most underrated part of playing the running back position, would you the say? most underrated part? Um, I would say the ability. Hmm, that's a hard one. I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I feel like the running back position itself is kind of being, you know, not living up to its hype anymore. You know, you don't. You, they don't use us. I feel like as much as they can or as much as they should. You know, you know. We, you see backs like Gurley. You see backs like uh, the the back front of 49ers. Not 49ers. The the Saints. I'm sorry. Yep. And like how they're using them. And then you look at the rest of the league. Like. You know, it, it, they don't they don't get the most out of the backs like like the other two teams. So I just I feel like they should start making a move, you know, that way. Wes, wh who would you say has been the person who's helped you the most get to this point today? To get give, to give a little shout out to a person who's your, to someone in your support system um, that's allowed you to be drafted. I would say my real close family friend Bobby Darren. He's probably helped me out the most. Um, you know, just making the decision to go to Slippery Rock, you know, whenever I have, you know, questions or need some advice, football related, you know, he's always been there to help me out. So uh, I got to give him a shout out. So. so what does it mean that players who come from Slippery Rock and that conference can look at you and say that I can make it to the NFL, that this level of play can produce NFL quality talent? Um, all I got to say is, is if this is your dream, you know, you just got to work for it. You know, you've got to grind every day and you got to leave all the other distractions out. If this is something you're truly passionate about, 
you just put your head down, grind, and look up at the end, and it's scout's job to find talent. You know, if you got the talent, you'll, you'll make it. Here now with Arizona wide receiver Sean Poindexter. And Sean, just want to talk to you about just this experience in general. It's the first day of practice. Has this been about what you expected it would be coming down here? Yes, sir. It was. Uh, the competition was high and the intensity was high, and I think that guys were really competing out there. So, yeah. Yeah, you've got a very competitive receiving group. A couple guys that are really talented in that receiving core. Is there another guy that has really impressed you so far just through one day? Um, John is John is pretty good. Um, forget what school he's from, and so is Keyshawn. He's he's real uh, shifty and fast. Yep. And if, in your feedback from scouts, what's one area that you want to try and improve your game on out here on the on the practice field? Um, I just want to get in and out of breaks cleaner. And then is there uh, one area where you feel like you can kind of set yourself apart from the rest of the competition here? I think just continuing to use my size and um, you know to my advantage. Who's the best player that you went up against uh, this season in the Pac-12? It would have been USC number 24. I think his name was Isaiah Langley. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what was it about him that really stood out to you? He was physical and he was fast, good with his hips. He, he was a, a very athletic kid for sure. And is there a guy in the NFL that you kind of pattern your game after? Um, I don't really, um, you know, try to compare myself to people, but I think that when the ball's in the air, um, I go up and get it like Alshon Jeffrey. Here now with Stetson tight end Donald Parham. And Donald, uh, take us through this experience for you so far. You're the first player from Stetson ever here in Mobile at the Senior Bowl. Is this about what you expected it would be? Honestly, it's been a pretty rough experience. I mean, not in terms of, you know, the jump from, you know, small school, but in terms of all the stuff they got us doing, like, every day is just, like, something different. But, I mean, it's definitely fun out here. Yeah. yeah, no question. I mean, it's kind of, obviously, look, it's not just football. You're going to come and you're going to do media training. You're here at Media Day now. You've got weigh-ins. You've got meetings. There's medicals. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that you're going to be asked to do. Take us to the on-field portion of it now. When, when For fans who have yet to see you play, what do you kind of bring to the field? What do you expect to bring to the NFL? Honestly, I just bring a big target. You know, I'm very, I can stretch the field vertically very well. And, um, Definitely just a lot of energy and a lot of effort. Yeah, you, you might be a big target. <laughs> uh, you're like 6'8", six, you're six, 240 pounds. How do you like to use your size? What, in what area do you feel that your size really helps you most uh, on the field? Definitely stretching the field, yeah. uh, getting vertical on safeties and linebackers. Yeah. What's the, the hardest part about trying to create that separation uh, down the field? Because, you know, a lot of guys, it's not just physical ability. There's other parts of it as well. What's the, what's the hardest part, especially making that transition to the tight end spot? Honestly, it's just mainly just making sure that you're getting off the line clean. But um, after that, you just kind of let your uh, skill do the talking. I mean, getting stacked and uh, making sure that you just keep them on the back hip. Yeah, and you were a high school wide receiver. So yes, tell us about that transition when you got to college, having to put your hand in the dirt for the first time and learn how to play tight end. It, was, it wasn't too bad. I mean, I just made sure that I put on the, white, right, uh, the good weight and yeah. um, making sure that I, and I was still able to move. and. Um, making sure that I could also get my footwork down for when I block. And then for fans that obviously haven't seen you play, you've talked with a lot of scouts over the course of the last couple of years. What's the consistent feedback you've gotten so far in terms of an area where you want to prove yourself over the next couple of months? Definitely just making sure that I'm um, staying low and blocking and um, always giving effort. Yeah. And, so. and then is there a player that you've watched in the NFL over the course of your career that you say, you know what, this, is, this guy is kind of a model for success for a guy that's kind of built the way I am? Definitely, it had to be um, Gronk. You know how dominant, physically dominating he is over um, cornerbacks and safeties and stuff like that. So I definitely uh, model him. Here now with Michigan State tight end Matt Sokol and Matt. For those fans out there who have yet to see you play, give us a quick scouting report of what you'll bring to the NFL. I think uh, I bring uh, be able to be a tight end that can kind of do a lot of things, uh, play on special teams, be an inline blocker, be an off the line blocker, uh, be involved with passing game as well. And is there an area of your game that, you know, in getting that feedback from scouts that you know that you're going to have to improve on going to the next level? Uh, I think, uh, like everybody, I think I have a lot of things I can improve on, a lot of things to get better, elevate my game. I think my route running could become a little bit better. Uh, also, uh, you know, sometimes just keep my feet on some of my blocking, but uh, looking forward to working, improving on all those areas and giving everything I got going into this next phase of my football career. I think it's always interesting trying to get guys and their initial reactions to coming down here into this kind of atmosphere in an all-star game setting. What has it been like? Has it met your expectations so far? Yeah, it's been a really great experience. It's been really uh, a lot of things going right, you know, just really fast paced, a lot of interviews, uh, a lot of install, uh, trying to make sure we understand all offensive concepts uh, so we can come out here and be effective at practice. Luckily for me, I have a lot of carryover from the offense that came at Michigan State, a lot of pro-style concepts. So i um, been working, studying a lot, uh, doing a lot of interviews. It's been been really great so far, and I really enjoyed my experience here so far. Who's the best player that you went up against this year in your senior year? Played against a lot of good guys. Got to give credit uh, to Chase Winovich. I thought he was a really good defensive end for Michigan. Has a great motor and a uh, great, you know, great player.
And then lastly, is there a player that you kind of model your game after looking over to the NFL? I really liked watching Jason Witten when he was uh, playing. I think he was just the epitome of the tight end position. Could do it all, it was really well. Uh, had really great technique in his blocking and his route running. Um, and just a great person on and off the field. And uh, I think that's you know, somebody that I've looked up to in this game. All right, well, Matt, appreciate the time and best of luck here moving forward. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.